let's move on to A&M and Jimbo Fisher's team here in College Station. A&M finished 9-1. and one. Their one loss coming to Alabama early in the season, but they got run off the field like most people did. A&M, if they had played Alabama again, I, I'm pretty sure it probably would have been the same result. They weren't explosive enough offensively last year, but they were very solid. They were, man, were they good up front. That O-line was tremendous. One of the best offensive lines um, I've seen in a while, and Alabama's had some really good ones, but but uh, this O-line for A&M was one of the best I've seen. They were excellent up front. And of course, Kellen Mond, a veteran quarterback, Jimbo Fisher's guy right there. He had a solid season. You know, I, I was hard on Mond uh, in his earlier years at, uh, at, a at A&M. I was hard on him, harsh on him early in the year last year. But again, he, he proved that he could be play at a high level more consistently, and he did well. So props to him. He's moving on to the NFL. Wish him nothing but the best moving forward. They finished with a big win in the Orange Bowl against North Carolina. That was a huge win for the Aggies there. They played motivated. They could have come out there and just, eh, you know, we didn't get in the playoffs, so that everybody uses that excuse. No, they played hard, and they got the win. So I think Jimbo Fisher deserves a lot of credit for making sure his team's head was screwed on straight and for them playing hard in that game. Now, recruiting-wise, Jimbo Fisher doing an excellent job here. Again, he's got to say Texas. He can recruit the whole Southeast, man. It's a different it's a different story recruiting in Texas, and he's doing a great job there. Um, fourth in the SEC, seventh nationally. He's going to have a little bit probably more of a challenge now with Sar uh, Sarkeesian there at Texas because A&M really has dominated the state of Texas recruiting-wise while Texas have been, University of Texas has been down a little bit. So he'll probably face a few more challenges there recruiting, but he's doing an excellent job right now. But the biggest obstacles facing this A&M team this upcoming year, like I said, with Florida, but A&M's even in a worse spot, I believe, with losing. They're losing a lot of guys. They were a very, very veteran team last year, and that's why they had success. And so as I was stating with Florida, if A&M has a little bit of a down year this year, I think you've got to, understand it if you're an Aggie fan say okay look we had a veteran team last year this may be a bit of a rebuilding year I'm not saying it's going to be yet but I'm saying there's a there's a high likelihood that it is a little bit of a rebuilding year got to figure out the quarterback situation you know it's just gonna it's gonna take some time I know they want consistent and eventually you're you're gonna expect because of the money the AM is paying Jimbo Fisher you're gonna expect consistent success in College Station but you're still building, uh, Fisher's still building this program here, and it's going to take some time to get to the point where you can have immediate success. One guy's in, next guy's, one guy's out, next guy's in, like that, like you see at Alabama, like you see at Clemson, like you see at Ohio State. You're going to want to get to that level if you're in Texas A&M, and that's where everybody wants to get. But not every program is, is great. There's a lot of good programs that, okay, like Iowa State, uh, and, you know, you talk about them. Iowa State is a team that they're building – those type of programs are built for one year where they have a chance to be something special. And that may have been where A&M is right now. That doesn't mean that's where they're going to be going forward. That just may be where the state of the program is currently. I felt like Iowa State may be a good comparison there because that's the kind of team. Iowa State's been building, building, building. They're going to be a veteran team. This is their year. And then it'll be back to rebuilding. You know, different programs have different styles of doing things. We Some programs, again, build up for one year. Some are able to, everybody wants to achieve where they can be consistent, boom, 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 good every single year. But it doesn't work out that way for, for the majority of programs. Again, they're sure your special programs, and that's why they're great programs that can do that. A&M fans want to get there, and I believe Jimbo Fisher can, but that kind of success takes time to build a program that can lose one guy, and the next guy comes in, and there's no drop-off. It's just tough to do. And even you see it even with those great programs. Sometimes that's not the case. So what I'm saying is if there's a drop-off at A&M this year, they should not get frustrated with Jimbo. I think he's doing a good job there, and I think he'll continue to do well. But having to replace an excellent offensive line is going to be uh, uh, tough. Having to replace Kellen Mond is going to be tough. They're going to have a, a quarterback battle. You do have some key pieces back on defense. Uh, defensive end Michael Clemens returning. Defensive end, a defensive tackle, Jaden Peavy. And uh, running back, you've got Isaiah Spiller and Nia Smith back, as well as arguably, depending on how Gilbert does it at Florida, 
Jalen Weidermeyer is set up to be the best tight end in the SEC. He was probably number two last year under Pitts. He, he really got, he, he didn't get the attention he deserved because he was a, he is a very good tight end. But again, because Kyle Pitts just stole the show last year, he didn't get the attention he deserved. But he's a very, very good player. And so I'm looking forward to watching him again this season. But then the quarterback battle, and again, A&M, this will take care of itself a little bit more in spring. I'm not sure. A lot. Some teams like to announce a starter out of spring. Some like to wait. I'm not sure what Jimbo's going to do here at A&M. At but we'll dive deeper a little bit into this quarterback battle a little bit later on. But the two names that we're watching are Zach uh, Calzon and Hayes uh, Haynes King here for A&M. Don't know too much about these guys. I know they're both sophomores. Um, I think Calzon's a redshirt sophomore. I could have that flip. Uh, Haynes maybe. But again, we'll dive a little bit deeper into that. That quarterback battle is one to watch there. Two guys that have been in the program now for a little bit. What can they do? Can they take? Who's going to step up? Who's going to be the guy to lead this A&M offense? But the, big, the bigger thing to me, more than the quarterback situation, is the offensive line. I think it's just going to be tough. We can talk about losing four starters on that offensive line. That was just tremendous. How do you build that back? A&M's defense was solid last year. I think they'll look to continue uh, on that on that road to continue to play solid defense in the SEC. So a little bit of a short breakdown there of the Aggies. Um, again, just uh, still a lot of questions to be answered here in College Station that I think will be in the near future. But again, they're just a young team. Uh, again, still a lot of still a lot of guys that that are taking advantage of that of the extra year of eligibility, but they're a young team in some key positions, though, for this upcoming season, or more so than young, just inexperienced at some key positions um, they will be for this upcoming season.